Welcome to Car Ride with Little Miss Gigi. A place where girls like you will be inspired by godly stories. Wow, great shot, Valentina. Thanks. I just need three more shots in the middle and I'll get into the front line. Yay! Yes, it's so exciting that we're so close to getting into the army. I can't wait. <gasps> Oops, I forgot to introduce ourselves. Um, hi girls, it's Esther here. Sorry I'm distracted. And it's Valentina. I'm so sorry too. It's just that we're so close to getting into the army and we kind of got distracted and we've been busy training. Yes, we've been going through mud and all these things. And I hope, Gigi Girls, that you have remembered to read and memorize the verse that Poppy told you last time. It's a great and powerful verse. Esther, Valentina, attention! Oh no, we need to get back to training. <gasps> we got in trouble. Okay, girls, we've got to go. We have a bow and arrow test. Bye! Wait, wait, we need Poppy. Poppy, come, come! Hello, girls! It's me again, Poppy. I'm still in the army. I'm whispering a little bit because it's really early. I thought I'd get up super early before the sun, which is when we do our practices, which makes me really oh, tired. But I really want to share this with you. This week in my glitter box, I have the armor of God. You'll have the helmet and the shield and the belt and well, You'll just have all of it. So make sure you download it because there's some other special surprises on there. But I don't want to spoil it and tell you all about it. Anyway, I've got to go get my boots on and get ready for training. It'll be tough again, but I can do it. I hope. All right. See you later, girls. Until next time, wish me luck. Bye. Hmm. Where are my boots? We just snuck out of the camp. I need to whisper though, so the commander doesn't hear us. But girls, we have to go to our story now. God's Warrior Princess Part 2 by Nadelle Manners Hi, my name is Elise and I'm in the army. Can you believe it? I already have an amazing belt of truth. And today I get another piece of armor, a breastplate to protect my heart. The day started out sunny and not just because the sun was shining, it was sunny because today I get to do art for a whole afternoon at school. I love art. My heart soared as I buttoned the crispy clean smock over the top of my school uniform, not a paint smudge in sight. Painting, here we come, I sing as I watch Grace also topping her uniform with a paint shirt. Our class has been working on paper mache birds for weeks. Gluing and sticking, gluing and sticking, tons of paper to a balloon to make a bird shape. And now we're at the exciting part where we get to paint our birds. Mine is going to be bright, happy colors. They remind me of the colors the commander chose for my duty gear. I have been dreaming of how my bird will look since the day we started this art project. The newspaper sheets cover our desk to catch any drips. My shiny white paint tray is empty. The paint brush is fluffy and soft, ready to be loaded with sunshine yellow. Our teacher, Mrs. Thompson, announced, You may start painting. And with that, there was a lot of happy chatter as we started to paint. It wasn't long, however, before I needed to top up my paint trays with more colors. Then I saw Jack again for the fourth time today. Jack had been frustrating me all day. First, he stuck his foot out and tripped me in P.E. Then at lunch, he launched his uneaten crust and he landed on my head. At the beginning of art class, he accidentally, on purpose, splodged a glob of bright blue paint at the front of my paint smock. And now I sport a purple tag on my back. What started out to be a wonderfully sunny day was quickly turning dark and gloomy. Well, the inside of me was starting to feel this way. Jack is so mean. He's always doing things to annoy me. What should I do to get him back? As soon as his words pop in my head, Grace could see that I was starting to get mad. I was slapping the paint on my bird without really thinking what I was doing. Just remember what the commander assistant told you as he helped you put on your breastplate, she whispered. 
It took a little while for her words to sink into my brain. My feelings really had got the better of me. Don't forget that the Prince of Darkness loves to meddle with our feelings. It is one of his favourite tactic assaults. I remember him saying, That's right! Now I recall, the Prince of Darkness loves sucking truth from our hearts and filling it with his own bad ideas. I remember more of the assistant's words. Be careful to ensure that you properly secure your breastplate to ward off his attack. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. You can find that in Proverbs 4.23. With the help of my cousin Grace, I am reminded of my choice to be a princess warrior for the ultimate commander. Just as the art smoke stopped Jack's paint, blows from staining my school uniform and my skin, the commander's breastplate stops the Prince of Darkness getting the better of my heart's feelings when I am under attack. I am so grateful that I hadn't got to the point of saying or doing anything nasty back to Jack. I love having the backup of another warrior princess. I have definitely learnt my lesson. From now on, I will choose to tightly secure the breastplate given to me by the commander for my protection. <sighs> and with all that, my paper mache bird seems to be taking on a shimmering glow. And I don't think that's from the school paint. One week later. Ew! What is that? I shrieked as a shudder coursed through my body. I am definitely not good with insects of the best of times, particularly spiders. But these little creepy crawlies I had not seen before. Oh, yuck! I watched with horror as tiny little crawling insects that look a lot like worms with legs climbed up the side of the school steps. Grace and I were sitting. All we were doing was sitting, eating our lunch leftovers, minding our own business and waiting for our mums to pick us up. The last thing I wanted was to be close to strange, icky little crawling pests. I sprang to a crouch, grabbed a stick laying under the bush near me and tried to push these little icky, yucky things away from me. What are you doing, silly? Grace said, laughing at my actions. As soon as the creepy crawlies sensed the looming danger of my stick, they curled into little spirals. This, of course, made it even harder to flick them out of the way. I was grossed out. But these weird scaly armored critters... What are they exactly? I asked, keeping my eyes on the little spirals, just in case they made a dash for my toes. As usual, Grace seemed unfazed by the whole scene. Millipedes, she casually exclaimed. Millipedes? What on earth are they? I asked. Well, Grace said, I learned about these cool little critters in science last year. They are quite amazing, really. They wear their skeleton on the outside of the body, a little bit like an armor. This is called an exoskeleton, and they aren't insects at all. They are actually diplopods, because they have two pairs of legs for each body segment. It's part of the anthropod family, and... Will you stop with the science lesson, Grace, and help me get these things away from me? I said as I inch closer to Grace. It was then that our mums turned up and I was able to make a quick getaway. While doing the dishes with mum later that evening, I shared about the not-so-very-cute millipedes. Mum laughed at my antics of the afternoon and she suggested that we should do some research about these little things after our jobs were done. After doing quite a bit of investigation, these creatures still grossed me out a little bit, but I did start to think that they were quite cool. You see, a millipede's back is made up of hard plates that overlap each other and curve much of the way around its body. This protects its soft underside, and because they can't move very fast, yes, it was at this point that I did feel a little silly about my antics of the steps that afternoon. They really weren't going to scurry up my legs at all. Instead, they are protected from predators. That sometimes comes in a form of me, Elise, by colliding the bodies into tight spirals. It was at that point that I remember the Bible text from our family worship the night before. In Ephesians 6.6 6, it said, In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. God gave millipedes an inbuilt shield of protection and by putting my faith in Jesus, he gives me a special shield protecting me too. By Jesus covering all of me and the fiery arrows, the bad stuff, the Prince of Darkness throws my way, 
dances off my Jesus shield. I may still feel the Prince of Darkness as he tries to get me. However, I don't have to be afraid because God, my shield, is the first line of defense. He is the power that saves me and puts me in a place of safety. 2 Samuel 22, 3. And all I have to do is hold up my shield and let all that see that I'm a Jesus girl. Next time I come across a millipede, I won't be reaching for the closest stick. I will just let them be. Instead, I will be reminded that all warrior princes need to do this. Look to Jesus for protection every day. Week 2 Shoes, glorious shoes. What girl doesn't love shoes? I'm on my way for a shopping date with my cousin Grace and my mum. We're off to get shoes for us to wear with our special dresses for our aunt's wedding. And depending on how our afternoon goes, we may even have time for afternoon tea with just the three of us and no brothers this time. Ooh, I wonder if mum will let us buy some high heel shoes. It is so very special occasion, so maybe she will. I daydream about all the new fabulous shoes, which I will get to try on as we spend the next 20 minutes in the car heading towards the city. We had done our research. We knew which shoe shops were going to be the best for the type of shoes we were looking for. It wasn't going to be school shoes or runners or footy boots that we needed. We just wanted shoes that had a little bit of bling and hopefully with at least a little bit of heel. Throughout the afternoon, Grace and I tried on so many pairs of shoes, we eventually lost count of them all. Some were too tall, too babyish, wrong color, right shape, wrong size. By the end of the day, the fun shoe shopping bubble had burst. My daydream was becoming a nightmare. Who would have thought that shoe shopping would turn out to be so hard? My feet hurt from walking. My toes hurt from being cramped in shoes that weren't the correct size. The pair that Grace and I loved, Mum said, wasn't great for an outdoor wedding where we would have to stand for a long time or climb over rocks at the beach where the wedding photos were to be taken. What were we going to do? With a tired voice, I turned to Grace and Mum and said, there certainly wasn't anything about the shoes that we tried on that made for peaceful feet. Can we have afternoon tea, please? And with that, we all agreed that a break would be a good idea. Peaceful feet? Grace questioned after taking a sip of her hot chocolate. What do you mean by that, Elise? Well, I said, trying on all those shoes reminded me of the shoes that the commander gave us with their duty gear. Do you remember? The commander's assistant told us. For shoes put on the piece that come from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared, armed for action, ready to move. I was puzzled by this, but after trying on all those shoes that didn't fit well and hurt my feet, I get it. Well, I think I get it. By getting to know the commander's son, Jesus, and what he did for us, this is the good news. We have nothing to fear. That's in John 16, 3. This makes me feel at peace and gives me the courage to walk the rockiest path because the shoes the commander gave us fit perfectly and they never wear out. Popping my last marshmallow into my mouth, I said, The other good thing about wearing the piece of good news as a shoe is that we can always be ready to move quickly and share with others this piece. With the last sip of my delicious hot chocolate, I announced, Now, back to the ships for Auntie Iris' wedding. I have decided that I'm going to stick with the comfy ones that I have at home. They are flat but still sparkly silver. And more importantly, they help me remember to have peaceful feet. Grace agreed. Peaceful feet were indeed far better than wearing the cute high heels I had daydreamed earlier in the day. I was ready to go home and I was ready to get more armor from God. I couldn't wait to see what was next. That was an awesome story, but it's almost time for breakfast and I'm starving. How about you, Esther? Yes, I'm exhausted. I can barely move my body and I'm also hungry. Girls, check out our bookshelf. Coming this December, Little Miss Gigi's very first audio chapter book, Mary's Big News, plus a matching downloadable activity booklet. Travel back in time as you listen to the nativity story like you've never heard it before. Here's a sneak peek. 
It was late in the evening when Joseph left the house. As soon as he was gone, Mary got ready for bed. She was exhausted. After she untied her braid, Mary pulled back the coloured woolen matting covering her small window and peered out. Little stars flickered in the distance, and for some reason, they seemed to be flickering faster, getting closer and becoming brighter. Mary shook her head. It had been a long and eventful day. She was just tired and imagining things. She turned around and walked to her little water pitcher in the corner to wash her face. Suddenly, a flash of blinding light filled the room. Terrified, Mary jumped back, making the little clay dish she held fall heavily onto the uneven rough stone floor. It shattered into a million pieces. Water splattered all over her dress and on the floor. Mary blinked quickly, trying to adjust her eyes to the glare. So what happens next? Find out this December. Gift this audiobook and activity booklet to a girl you love. I can't wait to listen to that. It sounds so awesome and cool. It just sounds amazing. All right, girls, we've got to go and have breakfast. We hope you have an amazing rest of the week and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Don't forget that you're Gigi, gorgeous in God's image.